Hey, I'm Brandon, and today we are checking out the next XR3R helmet coming in at 550 buckaroos. And as you can tell, this is very much a sport-oriented helmet geared towards riders out there looking to find some serious speed. The aerodynamics on this helmet are pretty solid. We've got some aero turbulators here, but I do have some gripes with this helmet. I've got some nitpicks, and we'll get into that. There's a lot to cover with this particular helmet. It's bringing a, a fair amount to the table in both weight and overall features, so we'll talk about that in just a moment. But before we do, I do want to take a second real quick to talk about the overall fit as that is fairly important. So I typically measure right at 22 and a half inches around the full circumference of my head and I typically wear a size medium. The medium fits me well in this helmet so I would certainly say it's fitting true to size. The interior however is going to be an intermediate to round oval internal shape here. So it's a bit more elongated front to back but you've got a little bit more of that kind of round uh, style to it with the overall fit. So just keep that in mind it's not a true intermediate it airs on the side of that round side but again true to size so get your measurements reference the tart and you should be all set there and at 550 bucks of course this will ship to you for free and we do have our price match policy in place so take advantage of that three shell sizes with this particular helmet and that's one of the things i wanted to address physically it is large and it's not just because this spoiler is added on in the back this is included in the box it does not come pre-installed it's a little finicky to install not too challenging but You'll probably know what I mean when you get to it, but that is included in the box. But the overall shell itself is just physically large. It's physically wide. Um, this is a size large, but the medium and the large are gonna share that same shell. And just to give you the shell breakdown, you've got extra small to small in one shell, you've got medium to large in one, and then we've got the XL to 2XL in that third and final shell. But overall, physically, it's just a bit large in my personal opinion. And at 550 bucks, I'd like this to be a little bit more low profile. DOT and ECE certified. It's the 2206 certification, just for those of you out there wondering. Three pounds, 15 ounces in a size large, and that is with the spoiler added on there, that particular weight. So uh, it's only gonna shave off a few ounces with this removed. So three pounds, 15 ounces in a size large at 550 bucks. That's certainly a miss for me. On the next iteration of this helmet, I, I think we've gotta find a way to shave some weight. At this price point, when you look at other options on the market, it's not really a competitive weight by any means. Uh, you know, I've weighed ADV helmets that weigh less than this particular helmet. So that's certainly going to be a big miss in my personal opinion. But let's talk about some of the some of the details here. Let's get into it. Right here at the front, you can see you do have an active vent. Very easy to open and close that. There is a lower vent that you cannot open and it just goes directly in there, but you can open and close that. It's very easy to do, very smooth. Uh, as we swing up to the top, you do have this brow vent, just a little snap right there. And then we've got two at the top. They're fine, they work just fine. They just feel, they don't feel as smooth and as refined as what I would typically expect at this particular price point. And swinging out to the rear, we do have some exhaust vents here, very low profile, um, but you can grab under those a little bit. So I'd like to see those a little bit more refined as well, but you can see we do have exhaust vents at the rear and that's gonna create that Venturi effect that we like, get that airflow moving through the helmet and help you keep nice and cool when you're out there zipping around. So swinging to the front of the helmet, the shield optics are pretty good it's fairly flat and we do have this little lock right here on the side I actually have that unlocked but you can see you can just push that forward to lock the shield in place but it's a bit tough there's only one pull tab right here on the left so when I pull this up I mean it takes some serious force to pull that so when this helmet is strapped to your head and your neck it's not the best design there in that regard so I wish I had another tab or maybe a center tab would probably be better with the overall design um, so anywho, a little bit tough. You do have some detents in there. I think you've got about four different detents um, if you'd like that. And it is pin lock ready. The pin lock is not included in the box. Again, at $550, when you look at some of the other options on the market, I think the pin lock should certainly be included with this particular helmet. You do have the tear off post on either side as well. So if you are at the track and you're racing, you've got some tear offs on there. Please do not use tear offs on the street. I always try to drive that home. It's not designed for that application. Pull over, wipe your visor, no big deal. It's when you're running hot laps at the track or you know doing some club racing, things like that. So that is what that is for. You can see the little turbulators right here as well. Um, there's a few little turbulators just to help smooth out the airflow. So aerodynamics, I think they did an excellent job. We just gotta get that physical weight down and the physical shell uh, size, the overall sizing of the shell itself, just a little bit down, I think would <laughs> help out quite a bit with the overall weight. Swinging over to the interior here. 
One thing though, I do like that, you know, that aggressive sporty design. It does look really sharp and I think the added spoiler just kind of adds that sporty flair to it for those of you out there getting after it in the sport riding application. However, it does make it a little bit challenging to sit it on a donut. So I apologize if this is squeaking and moving around, but I'll try my best here. I'll go ahead and set it down so we can open it up and get into the interior. So pull that apart. Let me go ahead and pull these cheek pads real quick. Double D-ring for the helmet closure there. Gonna take a little wrestling to get this thing out of here. All right. And we've got a single cheek pad out. And as you can see, we've got a little strap here. This is for your emergency release cheek pad. So you can pull on this and pull the cheek pads out. And you can also see there's a snap on there, which is a bit unusual, but it's actually designed to pair it up and link it up to the neck roll itself, just making it a little bit more secure. And there you go. As that breaks in, of course, it's gonna be more fine tuned to your facial features. As you get in some laps, sweat in this helmet a little bit, it will break in, but it's got a nice contour to the interior here. Then as we work our way to the headliner, try to set this up, see if we can get inside there a little bit. The headliner itself comes out very easily. Like it's very tough to get this to stay in place. And I noticed that right out of the box. So I think a little bit more refinement, maybe a different design in this particular location would be nice. I do like that we don't have button snaps in this area because those tend to put pressure on the forehead, but this just seems like it falls out. So maybe an updated design on that would be really nice to have, but that is the headliner. One thing you might notice, I should point out, is that you do have a little bit of adjustability here via Velcro. It's a bit unique. Typically we're used to seeing, you know, different pads that you can exchange and change out. This actually is on a Velcro strip on both the front and the back. So you can fine tune the adjustment here and kind of fine tune how snug it's kind of fitting on top of your head. But as that breaks in and as it, you know, adjusts it, I feel like it's just kind of going to be pulling in different locations and just going to set where it was originally anyway. So I don't know if I love this design. Some people might think differently, but it's not my favorite for the interior there, for the headliner at least. On the inside though, we do have nice recessed area for the speakers. You can see those on the inside, these little, basically it's like foam material here. It's a little bit tough to get those out from my particular angle, but there we go. Got it out of there. So you can just take those right out, throw in your speakers and you should be all set. But I do like the channels on the inside, decent channels for airflow to get through there. You've got a nice recessed area for the speakers. Um, so you can throw in your Bluetooth communication system. No problem there. Overall, I think we need a little bit more refinement at this particular price point. Um, it needs to be a little bit lighter. The shell size physically, I think needs to be a little bit lighter and give us the pin lock in the box. At this particular price, those are gonna be my nitpicks, right? And I think the shield too, this is just, yeah, even that's a little bit tough. And I, I just think on the next iteration of this particular helmet, we need a little bit more refinement if they're gonna stay at this particular price point. But I did wanna note, this is the X Matrix shell. It's a fiberglass aramid carbon combination. They do have a carbon version available as well, but unfortunately it doesn't really shave a whole lot of weight. So the weight is still gonna be a, a big miss for me at this particular price point. So hopefully on the next iteration, we'll see some more refinement and some improvements for this particular helmet. If you're looking for more details, feel free to click that info button on your desktop or mobile device. That's gonna take you over to the product page where you can take a closer look at this helmet. And as always, if you have any additional questions for us, please don't hesitate to reach out to our customer service team. They're all riders, more than happy to get you pointing in the right direction. Thanks for hanging out with me for a bit, taking a closer look at the next XR3 helmet. I'm Brandon, keep it pinned.